Joe, midway through the Redbird 2014 migration, there's been a tremendous amount of discussion about where flight training has been, where it is, and where it's going. Obviously, you have some opinions about that, and you've certainly taken uh, the bit in the teeth in regards to talking about proficiency issues, as seen at Oshkosh and other places. What, uh, what makes you so passionate about the proficiency issue right now, and what do you want to see happen? Man, a lot of things make me passionate about proficiency. I think, I think the biggest thing for me is I'm the kind of pilot that is flying for fun. I want to do this my whole life. I'm not flying for pay, and I'm not flying in situations where the risk should be greater than the reward. But I'm surrounded by mentors. I'm surrounded by pro pilots who give me great advice and who have made me fly, I think, with more wisdom than my hours would suggest. But we have these folks out there, Joe Pilot, Jane Pilot, flying 50 hours a year. They have their ticket. Maybe they're flying in a flight club. Maybe their airplane make and model is changing from time to time as they rent. And they're so resource weak in terms of what supports them. They're not getting recurrent training. They're not flying sims for practice. They don't have mentors to help their decision-making process. Now, this has historically been the case. And the result is that the same reasons why pilots bend airplanes are still the reasons why pilots bend airplanes. But now there's something very, very different, very different in industry. And that is that affordable simulation flying is available for Joe or Jane Pilot. Training systems and scenario-based trainings can be delivered through that. IMC Club now exists, which is a chapter-based hangar flying, IFR specialty kind of club. There's all these ways that the average pilot now can access more professional material about proficiency, can practice proficiency in a sim environment. So I think to myself, there's no excuse not to get the quality kind of training that pros get as a GA recreational pilot. This has not been possible before, but it is now. And I think that if we focus on it, we could change the safety equation in GA tremendously, and I don't think it'll take that long to do it. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Who doesn't love to fly on a beautiful day? Views like these are half the reason you got a pilot's license in the first place. But as we all know, conditions change quickly. Sure, you've trained, but how often have you used that training in actual conditions? That's where the IMC Club comes in. If it's important to becoming a better pilot, we've got it covered. Because at IMC Club, our goal is to help pilots everywhere to be safer, smarter, and ready for anything. I remember giving uh, a couple of uh, students their opportunity to go out and take a check ride, and one of the best examiners I ever worked with would hand the ticket over and say, okay, this is either a license to learn right. or a license to kill. Right. Your choice. Right. So, how do we make sure that the licenses that are in possession right now continue to be licenses to learn? And if you would, talk a little bit about the experiment at Oshkosh this year. Well, I'll, I'll try to do both those. But, well, I would say this. Had I gotten my IFR ticket and then gone to an IMC club chapter meeting and found that there's people in the room that have been flying IFR for 10, 20, 30 years, had I been able to do that then, I would have started checking on challenging flights or challenging routes or weather conditions with those guys. I would have made them my mentors, and, and I, I know I would have been better off for it. As it happened, my first, I think, three or 400 hours after my ticket were mainly on my own moxie. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> by contrast uh, to the experience of having mentors, there is no comparison. Absolutely. So I ended up later meeting some very senior pilots who, who played that role for me, and I kept thinking to myself, for those that don't have this, the risk profile is totally different, and that's an unnecessary outcome. We can fix that. So IMC Club is a big part of that in my mind. So we said the greatest way to grow IMC Club is to expose more pilots to it. So we went to EAA AirVenture, and we built this IFR Proficiency Center, which was sponsored by EAA and IMC. And it had tech talks on one half of the pavilion, and it had eight simulators running real IFR flight scenarios mm -hmm. with live ATC. So if you came to our center, you could sit in a forum, get an hour of training, or you could go fly an hour in IMC conditions with real ATC and a NAFI pilot sitting right next to you, a NAFI CFI. Mm -hmm. And we ran 2,100 people through the center in a week. 
Now that's 2,100 people that now think about proficiency as something they can obtain in between Oshkosh sessions. Because all they gotta do is fly into flight school with a simulator and they go practice. So imagine when fall rolls around, you go fly 10 approaches before you ever start your engine. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal. Proficiency's been sort of branded as safety initiative. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is for me. This is skill building. This is something where we say to pilots, you're gonna fly anyways, why not work on your skills? Why not go get an hour of flight instruction when there's no BFR to be had? Just go work on being a better pilot and all the fundamentals. So in order to try to promote that concept, we want to take the IFR center at AirVenture and turn it into a proficiency neighborhood. And we want to try to reach more pilots. So whether they're stick and rudder guys or tail dragger guys or IFR guys, we want to have a neighborhood where when you go to Oshkosh, there's a reason to go there every day to be with pilots and have a hangar flying experience, fly some sims, go to some training and education, maybe take some AOPA tests and quizzes and get wings points. So if you go there, for reasons other than building airplanes or looking at classics or looking at, at uh, home belts. Uh, we want you to come as a pilot to think of it as your annual proficiency trip. Learn some things, see some things, and then go get that same experience in between shows with your local flight school. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Joe, how do you come about this? I mean, you've, you're obviously running a, a company that is pivotal in the industry and certainly raising the bar on a regular level, but uh, it goes way beyond that. You're involved in a number of areas. Tell me exactly where your passion for aviation comes from and, more important, how it's manifesting itself. Yeah. Well, you know, as I said before, a lot of this comes from my own experience as a pilot, and that caused me to be interested. But then, because I'm in this industry, and, and right now, for fairly unique reasons, I'm serving on some of the association boards, and I, I volunteer for some of the organizations like IMC Club, um, I sort of have this opportunity to bring some pieces together as a facilitator, and I've found a lot of friends in industry that are like-minded, whether it's the guys at Redbird or Jeppesen or Forflight, what have you. People want to see proficiency rise to the level of the new, new thing that industry can get back to the thing that supports us, which is the pilot experience. If pilots don't fly airplanes and they don't fly them well, we don't have a GA industry. So how can we make that whole experience better? How can we cause children of pilots to want to be pilots? These are the questions we're asking ourselves, and in the end, it has to be about proficiency. So right now, I figure I got a couple years where my various volunteer work in the industry kind of weds these things together, and I'm just trying to take advantage of that moment to initiate some things with friends to see if they stick. Joe, thanks so much from the ramp at the Redbird Skyport during Redbird Migration 2014. We thank you for your time. No problem.